everyone and welcome to distance learning at Miss Temple's apartment. Yay! Um, so today I'm going to read you a book called Hello, Hello by Brendan Wenzel and then we are going to be inspired by the movie that I just watched, Rio, um, and we are going to draw a macaw. Um, there are a few uh, birds in this book but I figured why not be inspired by something beautiful. Um, okay, so I'm going to move this so we can read. Hello, hello. Very long book. Here we go. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Black and white. Hello, color. Hello, bright. Hello, stripes. Hello, spot. Hello, giant. Hello, not. Hello, tongue, ears, hands, and nose. Hello, pattern. Hello, pose. Hello, shape. Hello, show. Hello, wonder. Hello, whoa. Hello, quiet. Hello, loud. Hello, wild. Hello, proud. Hello, beauty. Hello, bend. Hello, neighbor. Hello, friend. Hello, roars, peeps, chirps, and chants. Hello, song, and hello, dance. A world to see. A world to know. Where to begin? Hello, hello. I love that story. Okay, so what you're going to need is white paper. Um, today I'm going to actually use some watercolor for us and um, you can have a pencil as well so you can draw out what you're going to be drawing. Um, and if you don't have watercolors at home, that's okay. You can also use markers as watercolors, and I can show you how to do that. We'll do that for the background. Um, so I'm going to go and get myself set up, and I'll be back. Here we are all set up. I have a pencil. I have my paintbrush. Um, you're going to want a Sharpie marker that works. And as most of you know, a lot of my Sharpies don't work. So we're going to test that one out right now. Oh, looks like it works pretty well. Um, and that is all you're going to need for right now before we get into our watercolors. Um, Remember, if you don't have watercolors at home, just regular Crayola markers will work perfectly fine. Um, we'll show you, I'll show you how to do that in the background. Okay, so what we are going to do is we are gonna start with our pencil. We're gonna start with a circle shape in the middle. You see how it's taking up a lot of my space we want to make sure that we're really taking up a lot of space here. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to make a straight line so it makes the letter P. You don't want that P to go too far down, but it should go like a finger away from the side of your paper. Does that make sense? One finger? Okay, now we're going to make an upside down U shape that's gonna be on the bottom here. You want it to be a little further away towards this way of your, um, the line that you just made, and then come down just like this. So it's gonna go all the way down to the bottom of your paper, off of the white paper, just like that. We're gonna give him a belly. So what you're gonna do is from here to the bottom of your paper, make a curved line. Just like that. Now, you're gonna make a similar shape, but like a backward C right here, very thin. That's gonna be his other wing. 
Okay, now we only have a few more things to do. First, we're gonna go in where our, um, where his neck slash belly meet the circle. And we're gonna make a, heart, a half of a heart shape. See that half heart shape that I made? Perfect. You can even make it a little bit bigger, I think. I'm going to go up just a little bit. Yeah, I'm feeling better about that. Now, this is the part that gets kind of funky. What we're going to do is we're going to start with a flattened C, and then we're going to bring that around so that it makes a rainbow shape, right? See my rainbow? This just a little bit. Yep, here we go. Now, from the middle of that first line that we made, I'm gonna make a wiggly line, but it's only gonna wiggle. Go down, up, down, and then you're gonna curve it so that it hits where we have our rainbow shape. Now, you're gonna connect a U shape. That's his beak. Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna now go over this circle line. I'm gonna erase the circle lines that are inside of my beak and inside of the neck shape that we made. Now, inside of our head, we're gonna make a little circle with a little circle inside, with a little circle inside. Mm, I'm not feeling so good about my placement. I'm gonna erase it, and I'm gonna put mine just a little bit lower. Yeah, that's better. Circle, circle, circle. Much better. Now, I'm gonna make four lines underneath. One, Two, three, four. Getting pretty happy with this. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make some, it's going to look like a rainbow kind of, but we're going to start with a circle. One, then we're going to do two, and then this last one, you know what, we're going to make one in here because that way we'll have an extra color. So we should have the circle, one stripe, two stripe, and then the rest of our wing, okay? Now, next step we gotta do is we're gonna put little U's that are connected like waves. You're gonna do them in each individual one of our sections that we just made, okay? We're gonna do this one. One, two, three, four, five. We're gonna do it here. We're gonna do it here. Okay, and I'm gonna do the same thing on this side, but I'm only gonna make one, maybe two layers, so one, making double use. Okay. And I'm gonna make this little lumpy, so that way it looks like we've got some um, feathers, right? Now, next and last step before we start our painting, we're gonna make zigzags. You don't have to do this with your pencil. I'm just gonna do it so that I can show you, but you can do it with your Sharpie. Now remember, I would not suggest going over, because we're using watercolors, with a black Crayola marker. I would suggest going over with a Sharpie because it is a alcohol-based 
marker, the water will not smear it. But if you use a Crayola marker, it will smear. Okay. Let's see if this marker, did we say this marker worked? Yup, this marker works. And I'm just gonna quickly go over. It's got some rustled feathers here. I think I just said rustled feathers and I meant Russell, ruffled feathers. Mm hmm. It's going well. My marker is starting to die, of course, that's okay. As you can see, I'm taking my time, making sure to go over all the lines that I have made. And I want you to notice how big I'm drawing. I really, really want you guys to learn to use your paper as, um, as large and as possible, like in drawing as large as possible. I'm gonna actually just color this in, leaving that, and these lines are black, so we're gonna go over them. Okay. <clears throat> I think I might be ready to start painting. Now, again, if you want, you can erase your drawing lines. I'm going to just erase here because I feel like that's the only spot that's really bothering me. And now I'm going to open up my hard to open watercolors. Okay. These have been used. So we're going to work with what we've got. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're gonna start with red. So I think this is like a brown red. Let's see. Ooh, it's so pretty though. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with this dark, this uh, normal bright red. Boop, 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 boop. You might be able to hear my guinea pig eating his cucumber. <laughs> so if you hear that, I'm sorry. Um, okay, we're gonna start and we're gonna paint in the same direction. So we can add some water. Mm, that's really pretty. So now, as I'm going around, now my paper, I'm gonna go down. So see how I'm painting with the direction of the lines that I've made? So now it's gonna go down and I'm gonna even paint to the side here. So it follows the direction of what I've drawn. It makes it so that it has texture to it just a little bit and you, if you make these tiny little um, hatch marks like what I was saying um, in my other video um, it makes it so that it looks like feathers a little bit um, I'm gonna keep going going around my wing Oops, didn't mean oh well that part has to be red anyway Now, 
notice I'm picking up my, my paintbrush and I'm making little lines. Just helps make it a little bit more dynamic. You get more color. Um, remember, you don't need a lot of color. You need a little bit more water. Look how bright and vibrant that is and I'm barely touching into my palette. Now, that looks beautiful, but I'm gonna go in with this darker red if you have it. If you don't have it, that's okay. You can also use a little, little itty bitty bit of um, like a, um, a purple or a blue and I'm gonna make just a little shadow on one side of it, just so he's got a little bit of, looks three-dimensional here. Ooh, that really did a good job. Um, I'm gonna do this here, because that's underneath his wing, and we can, I think that's fine. Okay, now I'm gonna go back in with my bright red, and I'm gonna paint this whole section Remember not to put your hand in it because <laughs> otherwise you get paint on your hands and it could mess up your paint. Okay. I'm gonna actually go over that little spot. Boop, 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 boop. Okay. I'm gonna go in with some of this darker red, purple, maroon color and I'm gonna go underneath each layer boop, 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 and it makes it look like he's got layers of feathers there okay now we're gonna take yellow we've got two places to color yellow okay we're gonna color yellow here Ooh, this is like the perfect macaw yellow Okay, just a little bit more water. See how I just dipped in the water and didn't even have to go back into the paint? Sometimes you don't need that. Okay, I'm gonna take some of this dark orange color. It's actually called yellow ochre. And I'm gonna go underneath my color. Okay, just to make it look like it's got a little shadow there. Okay, I'm gonna wash off my brush and I'm gonna go for green. A Little bit more water, same thing. I'm gonna do this one line. Just a little bit more water. When you start to see the scratches of the brush bristles, that's how you know you need a little bit more uh, water. Um, I'm gonna go in for this green here to make that shadow color. Ooh. And if you don't want to do the shadows, you don't have to, it's just a suggestion. Okay, I'm washing off my brush. Um, I forgot to do the yellow in this in the beak but we can always go back for that now i'm gonna go for this color blue oh i can tell this is like a beautiful blue already going for that color blue now this part i'm gonna color Ooh, just a little bit more water Ooh, you see how i have too much paint because i can't see through the color so i'm gonna a little bit of water, a little too much paint. Okay. Look at that color. Oh, it's stunning. Okay. Next, we're going to take the same color blue and we're going to go on this side. Okay, 
Next step, I'm gonna take this purple color, do, 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 and we're gonna go underneath and do that um, shadowing. Ooh, look how pretty that looks. Okay, same thing. And if you feel like it's just too much, you can pat it out. Okay, now I'm gonna wash off my brush, making sure to scrub on the bottom because you wanna get that color off of here. Getting rid of all of my little um, eraser shavings. And I'm gonna go back to this yellow color that I used in the beak. Bill, beak, Bill, I don't know. Hi, beak on Bill. Okay, and I'm gonna color that in. You can see a little bit that I have um, a little bit of blue on my brush from before, but that's okay. I kind of like the way that they mixed together. And I'm gonna take some of this and we're gonna color just a little bit underneath so it gives it a little shadow. Mm -hmm. I love them. Okay. And then and I use my fingers a lot. Move it around a little bit. Okay. Now you get to choose what color eyeball you want. Um, I think that I am going to use um, this color green right here. I feel like that's a good choice for me. Um, in the movie Rio, blue, the main macaw, is, is a blue macaw. But I liked the red ones a little bit um, better, so I think um, that's why I chose this one. Okay, so now I'm going to put my watercolors away. You can choose to do this um, with the watercolors, or here's a different way that we can do it. I'm going to take a bigger brush, and I'm going to decide that I'm going to use my markers as watercolors which is really cool. Um, I'm actually going to just make blocks of green. Okay. And I'm gonna use this one too. Ooh. Make it a little bit fun. Okay. Ooh, almost put that in the water. <laughs> Take your big brush, bigger brush, and then you can just move this around. A little bit, just like watercolors would work. You can also wet your paper a little bit and then go back in with these colors and it should give a little bit. I would say that it's probably better to wet the paper before, but your markers might get a little funky. Um, I would, I actually really like the way it looks. Um, I had paper underneath just in case. Um, so I'm moving this around. The ink is moving with me. It's becoming kind of tie dye -y. I like how it's like just a little bit of color. Ooh. Now you can do this with in the macaw as well, like coloring in with the markers and then um, painting the backgrounds with watercolor or just with the markers. You can do the whole thing however you want. There is no wrong way to do this. Um, what I'm gonna do now is I might go in with some, ooh, look how pretty that looks. Um, I'm gonna go in with some of my um, real watercolors, take some colors, and I'm gonna make 
some leaf shapes in the background. Ooh. And they don't have to be, they can be very loose and um, they don't have to be so realistic looking, but it just gives it a little bit, a little touch. And there you go. That is how to draw a macaw. That rhymes. <laughs> um, that is how you draw a macaw. I'm going to sign it. I would wait normally to sign it until it's dry, but because we're on a time crunch, boop, boop. 20, 20 exclamation point. Hope you had a good time. Don't forget to send them to me at htemple at schools.nyc.gov or you can just dojo them to me. Thanks so much. Hope you had a good time.